shouldn't be put off by what sounds like dodgy acting to start with. It's deliberate. Playing with Dracula, by Nick Fisher, with Nicholas Grace, Maureen O'Brien, and Cyril Jenkins. Playing with Dracula. The sustainer of life, without which the taut stays of muscle fast atrophy, the slither and slime of liver and spleen rapidly dries and perishes, the very cells of the brain, those spongy grey wrinkles of memory, wither upon the spot to blank, imbecility, without blood. I see the flutter of a pulse, trapped like a caged bird in such a delicate, vulnerable neck. It is calling me across the endless, arid plains of time. It is calling, and I am coming. Wind's getting up again. Mm, forecast was pretty bad. I'm frightened. A bit of a storm. It's not that. I feel sure there's someone out there. Oh, really? The only thing out and about in a night like this is your highly excitable imagination. But it feels just like that other time. That's all over and done with. It's finished, Susan. Finished. We saw with our own eyes. I know, but... There are no buts. Death is for keeps. <laughs> you don't come wandering back for second helpings. So. Don't make a joke of it, Arthur, please. I'm simply trying to lighten the atmosphere. I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm going to make some supper. If a zombie happens to drop by to read the meter, let me know. Oh, you're so smug. <gasps> Hello? Is somebody there? Hello? Oh, pull yourself together, woman. John's right. There's nothing, nothing at all. Hello, Susan. Did you think I was dead? How foolish. We take an awful lot of killing. What, what do you want? I'm hungry, Susan. Keep away from me. There is no escape. Please, leave me alone. I must satisfy my hunger. No. Leave her! Uh, you! Oh. Oh. You think you can harm me? Have you not tried before? Yes, but not... With an electric carving knife. <laughs> that was much better, Arthur. Oh. And the sound effects were excellent. <laughs> and, and the blood was super that time. Wow. Nothing else of Jonathan like a strawberry milkshake. I know, it's all over my shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, Arthur. sort of washed up more than I was expecting. Well, I hope it washes out. Penny will go barbed. The only problem with that take was you, Mary. Oh, you don't mean I've got to have that green face leering over me again, Shelley? No, it's only a film, Mary. It's the devastating power of my acting. Then. It's not your acting, it's your makeup, that green slime dripping off your nose. Oh, does that work? I'm so glad. It's mainly pesto sauce, that's how I got the peculiarly lumpy skin effect. Pesto? It's funny aftertaste. Or there's this gluey stuff keeping it together. And I, I... Glue? It has to come off, Lucy. I can hardly go into work like this Look, Can we concentrate oh, on the yeah. acting, please? Mary, you've simply got to get hysterical. Perhaps if Jonathan was a bit rough... He's rough enough already, thank you. <clears throat> My dear Mary, when I used to run Henley Amateur Dramatics, everyone would be red raw after rehearsals of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but no one complained. No one. Because they were all unconscious. Pardon? Uh, nothing, Shelley, nothing. Now, who the... Oh, of course. That'll be this red grave chap. Red 
Okay. Let him in, you'll see. Oh, my wait. What red grey chap? Rang yesterday about uh, joining our little group. Oh, no. and I must say his credentials sounded excellent. Mm -hmm. Ah, good evening. Mr. Redgrave? Byron Redgrave, at your service. Byron? Well, I hope you're not mad, bad and dangerous to know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Only when there's a full moon. Oh, oh <laughs> yes, very good. But... Oh, well, do excuse us, we're being so rude. Um, I'm Shelley Homewood. We spoke on the phone. Charming to meet you in person, Mrs. Homewood. Thank you. I'm the leader of the group. Unofficial leader. Well, someone has to take charge. Dictatorship is the only way forward in art. But um, let me introduce everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is Lucy Weston. She's our makeup girl, but of course she chips in with some acting too. Pleased to meet you, Lucy. Hello. That's Mary Morris, a uh. near victim in the scene we've just been shooting mm -hmm. with um, Jonathan Parker, our Hello. villain with the postular green face. Most there. impressive. <laughs> and uh, finally, mm -hmm. that's Arthur Renfield with the electric carving knife. <laughs> ah. In the original film, it was a sword, but yeah, I like to update things a little. Splendid. An electric carving knife. Well, I read that snippet about you in the local paper, but do tell me more. We create horror, Mr. Redgrave. <laughs> Byron, please. That is, if we do our own video remakes of old Hammer films and the like. Why horror? Why not romance? Oh, here, here. Lots of kissing and cuddling and nude bed scenes. Oh, but I don't think so. Yeah. Horror's best for the special effects, you see. All that Kensington gore. Besides, it's the art form of our time. The, the Greeks had Oedipus, the Elizabethans, King Lear. We have the horror film. It's the modern equivalent of catharsis. I see. But tell us about yourself, Byron. Shelley said you'd like to join us as an actor. Yes. Well, I have worked extensively. With the RSC, for example. Oh, really? Oh, Shakespeare Company. Mm -hmm. Well, we're strictly amateurs, Mr. Redgrave. Byron. Did you play Macbeth and things, Byron? Sadly not. I was only there for a short time before Hollywood intervened. Oh. Whisked me off. Really? <gasps> yes. But the car crash put paid to that almost before I got started. Car crash? Ghastly freeway pile-up in L.A. Oh. I lost Carmilla, my dear first wife. Oh. oh, but I'd rather not dwell on that. Of course not. Well, what are you up to now? Ah, well, uh, I happen to be between engagements. Uh, that's why I got in touch. Now, what's your next project? Uh, well, we're going to hunt down a good location instead of just filming in our own homes. And we're doing vampires. Would, um, playing Dracula... Interest you? Dracula. Unquestionably. Dracula. What is the vampire nowadays but a creature of myth? A lurid creation of folklore, of tales told to frighten children in Hungary, in Romania, in the land beyond the forest, Transylvania. From that dark place, strange mists and fog have stolen on the night air across many countries. From the land beyond the forest to the dull, green, ordinary heart of England. I think I may have just the thing for you, Miss Weston. There. Thank you. Oh, how wonderful. It's an old abbey. It looks absolutely enormous. Yes, that's one of the reasons it's been on the market for so long. And, of course, not everyone likes such isolation. But that would be perfect for us, wouldn't it, Lucy? Ideal. The old owner died suddenly. He did tremendous work on the place. As you can see, he turned it into something of a fortress. Mm. The inside is also much as he left it. All the furnishings are still there. There's a distant relative in uh, Budapest who asked us to handle a sale, but, well, frankly, with the way things are at the moment... So you don't think there'd be any objections to it being used for a weekend's filming? I can't see why. I'm sure we could negotiate an acceptable fee. I don't know. I think the script's very good as it stands. But it would be so much more exciting to do some original work. work yes. Of course, but we can't afford to hire a writer. And besides, one hears they're so temperamental. Mm, I could do something. You write? I can turn my hand to it. Well, perhaps for a future project, but we're doing Dracula in two weeks' time. I'm sure I could knock something together practically overnight. I'm a terrible sleeper. Often up till dawn, anyway. Look, why don't I try getting my teeth into it? If I haven't got something good and gory for you in a couple of days, you've always got the rehash to fall back on. Well, I suppose... You may go where you wish, except where the doors are locked. <laughs> <laughs> Voice projection is a mere technique. You simply learn it. I'd love to be involved in all that. You already are, Lucy. I don't think our little videos count. Oh, nonsense. You'd be surprised how many Hollywood actors and directors started out doing home movies on minuscule budgets. I hardly think I'm going to Hollywood. Lucy, the unexpected always happens. 
especially to someone as pretty as you. Oh, Baron, not really. I mean it. You're a very pretty woman. You said the other day about your first wife being killed in that awful car crash. Is there a second, Mrs. Redgrave? There was, before the boating accident in the Aegean. Oh, Byron. I will say you did this remarkably quickly. A couple of nights' hard work. I enjoyed it. Well, you've certainly created a major part for yourself. Purely a matter of practicality. Naturally, I'll have no problem learning such a large role. The secondary characters are deliberately small so that those of a more amateur status can cope. Well, all right. We'll do it. Excellent. Now, are you ready to order? Then we'll join the others. Just a salad for me, I think. Really? I rather fancy the steak tartare. Raw meat? Oh, God, how could you? My favourite. And it's terribly good for one's blood. Lovely weather. Nearly there. Oh, uh, left here. You sure? That's not much more than a track. Carlax Abbey. It's clearly marked. It has to be this one. Okay. Are the others with us? Uh, right behind. You know, Carlax somehow rings a vague bell. Sounds like something to assist bowel movements to me. It would. Apparently the last owner called it that before it was simply the Abbey. Well, it's the middle of nowhere, all right. We haven't seen a sign of life for miles. Well, they did say it was isolated. I'm sure it'll be just perfect. Oh, my God. Oh, well. It looked good in the pictures, but not this good. I had no idea it was quite so enormous. Buckingham Palace can't be bigger than that. What a place, eh? Oh. Oh, uh. Shelley. I can't imagine where that wretched estate agent is. He said he'd be waiting here to give us the keys. There's no sign of a car, though. Oh, probably delayed by the weather. Well, we might as well start unloading. We can get everything undercover in the porch, the stacks of room. All right, so he'll probably be here before we finish. Those props dry. You bring the lights to Jonathan. Okay. But don't let any water get into them. Don't worry, I don't want to get electrocuted any more than you. I hate it. It's so close. Here, under my umbrella, Lucy. Oh, thank you. Isn't it awful? Tuck in close. You'll be all right. What's that smell? Wild garlic. The stacks of it growing by the outhouse there. Garlic. Yuck. Please, I'm getting soaked. <laughs> How come Lucy and Byron are exempted from hard work? Oh, she's terrified by lightning. As for Byron, well, we can't expect our leading man and author to get his hands dirty now, yes, can well, we? it always used to be equal shares. Well, with Shelley a bit more equal than the rest of us, wasn't it? Yes, Byron's muscled his way in pretty well, hasn't he? And poor little Lucy's quite besotted by the look of it. He's certainly written one heck of a star role for himself. <sighs> He'd have thought he'd been working on that for years. Mind you, I think Shelley's revising her opinion of him. Yes? I predict fireworks before long. Ooh. Right, let's go. <laughs> right. Uh, oh. <laughs> Where is this estate agent? Oh, maybe his car's broken down or something. Oh. Hang on. What's this pinned to the door? It's addressed to you, Shelley. Thank you. Keys. And a note. Help yourselves. Electricity is on. Didn't know if you'd get delayed by this awful weather. My family would worry if I... Hung around here after dark. <laughs> Must be nervy folks out here in the country. Right. Let's get inside then. Pitch black. Where are the light? Showing your torch, Arthur. Oh, here we are. Oh, throw a little light on the scene. Oh. Wow. Oh. Impressive. Spooky. Oh, take those off, Jonathan. Anything would look spooky through dark glasses. My eyes get sensitive to ultraviolet. Indoors, in this weather. I'm a delicate artist. More like a complete poser. Shut the front door, please, Ben. Right. Right, a quick ten minutes to have a look around, then I'd like to make a start. Oh, Banqueting hall. Those suits of armour are pretty creepy. Oh, I didn't hear anything. There! The suit of armour just moved. Come on, Lucy. 
you see, you're imagining things. I wasn't imagining the noise, was I? Well, no, but... Look out! <laughs> Byron! What the hell are you doing? It's like it was a heart attack. Just practising my role, getting into character. Well, kindly make sure your character keeps that axe to himself in future. How did you get in here, anyway? Like a shadow on the mist. Oh, God. Actually... I nipped in while you were nattering in the hall. Great acoustics in here. A bit like Stratford-upon-Avon, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. What's he doing? Don't you get a sleep. But it's enchanting, Shelley. Come on. I've seen enough. I don't want to go any further. But there's some lovely stained glass. God casting out witches or something. Oh, it's all a bit gory. Oh, there's even someone impaled on a stake. Yes, well, let's uh, let's go back to the others, shall we? Oh, you're not frightened. That's not like you at all. No, well, not exactly frightened. It's, it's just that ever since my grandfather's funeral, when I was about six, I've found churches and chapels ever so unsettling. Crosses and crucifixes make me go all funny. You're joking. No, really. Well, I... I think it's fantastic. Anyway, it's high time we started setting up for the first scene. It would be great filming in here, really atmospheric. I don't suppose vampires go to evening song a lot, do they? Shelley? Shelley? Where are you? Shelley? <gasps> Look over the altar. A huge black bat staring right at me. Look at its eyes. Its eyes. But this cable isn't stuck yes, down. Someone's going to go base over Apex soon. Hey, cats. Thanks. How's that for the lighting, Shelley? Not bad. Now, can you give me a red spot on Dracula's <coughs> face as he sinks his fangs into the first victim? Red, right, no problem. This dress is awfully low cut, Shelley. If I bend over, I'll probably tumble out like a couple of pounds of rotten tomatoes. No, no, my dear, it's perfect. You see, it's important to offer Dracula more than just your neck. Oh. In old Romanian tales, vampires tend to attach themselves a bit lower. Maybe, but you're attaching yourself no lower than my shoulder. I show these videos to my colleagues at the bell. Everyone happy with their makeup? I think I could be still face. dark around the eyes. Darken them any more, and you look like you've gone ten rounds with Frank Bruno. My dear Shelley, I do think I've enough experience to know what will work. And I think I'm the director. You said there'd be fireworks, Mary. Here they come. Mm-hmm. My instinct tells me I need to touch and more. And your director tells you you don't. I think Byron might be wrong. Stay out of this, Lucy. I have a concept of this role. I know exactly what effect I'm after. The look of the film is my department, so leave your makeup precisely as it is. Very well, if you insist. I do. Shelley, one, Byron, uh, nil. He'll want to level the score, then. Mm-hmm. Everyone ready for the first scene? Right. Mary... Byron, on set. Uh, before we start, I've got a little suggestion. Told you. I've had a look at some of your past efforts. Not bad, but the acting's rather amateurish. Well, we are amateurs, Byron. Not all of us, Arthur. Uh, you could all improve with just a bit of method. We already work very methodically, thank you. I meant the method. It's an acting technique. Byron, we haven't got time for drama lessons. Agreed, but some extra motivation might help. Now, everyone except Dracula needs to feel there's no escape from the castle, right? Obviously. Well, the windows in this place are securely barred, and the side doors are locked solid. Like the estate agent said, it's practically a fortress. The only possible way in or out is the main entrance here. If we lock it, it'll help motivate the feeling that we can't escape. With the weather out there, who needs motivating to stay inside? I really think we should be getting on. Why don't we do what Byron says? It can't do any harm, and it might help some of us. All right, all right, do it. For goodness sake, let's get moving. You won't regret this. Just think. We're trapped. There's no way out. And Dracula is among us. <sighs> Terrifying. Now let's start. <clears throat> okay. Mary, Byron, are you in position? Not sure about okay. Okay. Silence. On set. <clears throat> Playing with Dracula. Scene one. Take one. And... Action. Oh, will you not return? I might have nothing tonight. Oh, come to me, come, and we can rest together. My love, oh. I am here. Oh, kiss me, Dracula, kiss me. My dear, you are so white, so uh, pure, so... Uh, ow! Ooh, what the hell are you doing, Bob? Uh, that really hurts. I'm sorry, I was just getting into the passion of the moment. Well, so was I, but I was acting. God, I should think you'd drawn blood. Oh. Oh. skin's not broken, Mary. Bit of a mark, oh, that's no, all. You flaming idiot, Byron. It really was from the best of motives. Oh, such a stupid thing, oh. everybody! <laughs> Let's have a quick 
break and calm down. Look, we won't retake this immediately after. We'll do uh, Jonathan's death scene. It's in the same location, so we won't have to shift the lighting. Byron. No problem. <clears throat> I'd like a word in private. Oh, later. I've got a complex role to prepare. I need to clear my mind. Oh, amateur. Byron! Oh, Byron, wait! <sighs> well, something of a tense start. Perhaps we should get out from under each other's feet for five minutes and explore a bit more. Oh, very good idea, yeah. Well, no, I think I'll explore the kitchen. What have we got to eat, Sally? Any raw meat, or has Byron devoured all that? It wasn't your fault. They think it was. But they're not professionals. I thought you were wonderful, frightening, and well, sexy at the same time. Just like Dracula should be. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry I stormed off like that. It did take me a while to find you. I've been all over the building. This really is quite a place. And look what I found here. The way down to the cellars. Let's explore. It looks a bit too creepy for me. Uh, there's nothing to be frightened of. I'll be with you. Come on. Uh, uh, oh! <laughs> Extensive, aren't they? And creepy, like I said. That's only because the light's bad. Let's go back. But it's wonderful to get away from the others. I do find them rather trying. Oh, they're all right, really. A bit dull, perhaps, but the group's become much more exciting since you joined. And I'm glad I did. Or I'd never have met you, Lucy. That matters to you. Couldn't you tell? Well, I had hope, but I... Oh, Lucy. Lucy, you have such beautiful, delicate skin. Oh, I can see the pulse fluttering in your neck. Mary, do you think you can pop your hair up again? We're redoing really oh. your bit right after Jonathan's lesson. Lucy does it much I better. Know, but where is she? Look, we're wasting enough time as it is. There's a mirror right here. I'm sorry, Shelley, but I'll make a dreadful mess. Can you see what you're doing? No, not really well. Then you ought to see an optician. Oh, oh, here comes Lucy anyway. Lucy, Mary's hair needs redoing. Okay. Right, just... right then. Jonathan, where... Mm. Now where's he got to? Are we ever going to get started? Mm. There's... There's a vampire. Great entrance, Jonathan. Only the camera's not rolling. Wait till I shout out. Now, out you go. Oh. Oh. Out! Everyone's gone completely dude lally with your stupid method now, Byron. No, really? Let's try again. <clears throat> Silence on set. Pain <clears throat> with Dracula. Scene seven. Take one. And action. Action. This is a trap. It's a horrible trap. Get away. Quickly. If you don't, you'll... You'll all die. You, you see, it's... It's... Cut. Well oh, done. Oh. Terrific. An improvised, wasn't it? Surely the odd word out of place doesn't matter if you get a performance that good. I agree, that really was excellent. I'd just like to retake the fall. It was rather hard to catch on camera. All right, Jonathan? Oh, someone give him the kiss of life, please. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan, don't aggravate the director. She'll really explode if she's messed around much more. Jonathan. Ah! <gasps> what is it, Mary? He's not breathing. Not since he's pulling your leg. He's not, he's dead. Oh, really, Mary? Oh, my God, I think she's right. There's no pulse. Let me see. Did he have a history of heart problems? I don't think so. Why? The blue tinge on his face. It could be a sign of cardiac arrest. Oh, Tim, don't stand there talking. Call an ambulance, for God's There's sake. There's no phone here, Lucy. Besides, I don't think a doctor could help now. I don't believe this. It's a joke. Jonathan's always joking. Look, I don't know what you think you're doing, but we've had enough Jonathan. <sighs> Jonathan! No, let's not get carried away. Not get carried away. Jonathan's dead, Arthur. And he must have been dying when he came in, when we, when you pushed him out, Shelley, thinking he was acting. But I... I, I, I it could just have had a heart attack right at the end. Does it really matter when? It could. I, I mean, what caused it? Strain of the moment here or something else? He was completely off text, almost as if he was speaking directly to us. What are you getting at? I'm simply wondering if he could have been trying to warn us about something he'd seen. Oh, come along, Arthur. Your imagination's working overtime. People have heart attacks. It happens. Well, one thing's clear. We need to drive to the nearest village and alert the necessary authorities. You're right. That's obviously the first thing to... Oh, oh my God. What is it? Uh, the keys. They were in this pocket. Oh, you must be mistaken. Uh, Try the other one. 
Nothing. They're gone. Brilliant, Byron. Oh. First you lock us in, then you lose the keys. Oh, well done. You mean we can't get out? Everything else is really secure. Just stop it. It is. Oh. Hold it. Hold it. What's done is done. Arguing won't help. If the keys have been lost, we've simply got to find them. They can't have got far. Well, I'm afraid I did storm about a bit after that business over the first scene. I've been all over the building, really. But if we split up and search, I'm sure we'll find them soon enough. We're not splitting up. Why not? Because it's frightening, that's why not. Well, it might be a bit spooky, but spooky. after all... Spooky? Well, we don't know why Jonathan died. Well, we don't know if he'd seen something that killed him with fright. And if something did, whether or not the same thing could happen to us. Don't be absurd, Lucy. We just stick together. If we do, this will take forever. Look, why don't we split into two groups? At least that would halve the time. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Arthur. I'll stay with you, Arthur. You come with me, Lucy. Um, how about you, Shelley? I'll search on my own. It might be dangerous. Lucy, there isn't some bogeyman stalking this place. Now, for goodness sake, let's get started. Oh, come on. Come on. Those suits of armour could have someone hiding inside it, like in that Frankenstein film we did. Oh, come on, Mary. Things don't happen like that in real life. Now, let's look round for those keys. Oh, poor Jonathan. He was always so full of life. It's hard to think of things. I know. And now... Oh! 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 jump on you. It's alive. Mary, it's, it's no alive. such it's thing. Alive. Look! Oh! An empty suit of armour. That's all. Why does it jump on you if it's empty? It didn't jump. It fell. It must have got shifted when Byron was messing around here uh, earlier. I think you were somewhere else with Shelley at the time. Oh, yes, yes, I was in the chapel. That was all very odd. What was? Well, you know how tough Shelley is. But like searching on her own, you mean? Exactly. I've never seen her frightened, except in that chapel. She couldn't bring herself to look at the cross. She said it was a childhood thing and ran off. Well, I... But then... After she disappeared, I saw this huge bat. Just what are you suggesting, Mary? And this is the kitchen. Bigger than most people's homes. Yes, but where did you go? Well, I, I came in, wandered over here, looked out of the window, um, over to the fireplace, oh, oh, oh and uh, into the pantry here. Um, no, nothing here. Then back and... Shh. What? Shh. There's someone in the hall just outside the door. What's that? I don't know. I'm frightened. Stay where you are. Be careful, Byron. Don't worry. I just want to... <laughs> what is it? Keep listening. It sounds like she's found a cat. She's headed upstairs. I'll just make sure she's all right. I'll just call her. Don't! Don't call her! Why ever not? Because there's something altogether odd here. We'll explain in a minute. But the four of us should tackle Shelley together. Tackle her? What on earth are you talking about? Let's confront her, that's all. If we told you why, you'd think we'd go mad. Where did she go? Upstairs, after a cat. A cat? Did you see it? Well, no, but... Well, well, she was calling it. There wasn't any cat. She was hoping to tempt you to follow her, to split you up and to get one of you on your own. Oh. What do you mean? What's going on? Come on. What's happening? You'll find out soon enough. I don't understand. Don't hang about, Lucy. Come on. I'm frightened. I don't want to go up there. Which way now? I've no idea. Look, there's a door open. Ah! What's happening? What in heaven's name? Oh, my God. No. no. It's all right, Mary. Whatever it was. It's gone. Oh, but Lucy. 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 Yes. Are you all right? Yes, what was that? It brushed against me. It was horrible. Uh, horrible. Easy now, easy. It was like a giant bat. No, it was a shadow. That's all, surely. No. Shadows can't kill people. Kill? What do you mean? She's dead. Who? Shelley. Look. But she can't be. I mean, I thought... Yes? I, I thought... Just what did you think? That she was a vampire. That she killed Jonathan. You see, she was terrified of chapels and crosses and crucifixes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not get hysterical. You mean you seriously thought Shelley Homewood was a vampire? Really? Well, someone is. What? Look at her neck. Oh, my God, she's been bitten. Arthur... Arthur, 
she's been bitten, just like Jonathan. Jonathan? Yeah, something did the same to Jonathan. Mary and I just checked. Under the Kensington Gore, we found two little punctures with dried blood around them. That's why he died. You mean he bled to death? No. He probably did die of heart failure. But I think the shock of... whatever it was, caused it. Can we stop talking and get out of here? Before we're all killed. There's a vampire after us. Steady now. Now. It does look like there's a murderer on the loose, but not a vampire. That's the stuff of fiction. Well, how do you explain the bite marks? I can't. But I don't believe Dracula's playing with us. We must stay rational, Byron's right. We've got to stay calm and keep searching for those keys. Couldn't we break the front door down? No chance. Solid as a rock, designed to withstand battering rams. Now, do we stay in pairs? I suppose it is quick. We've searched the whole kitchen area and the library. Mary and I will tackle this corridor. And Lucy and I will go this way. Let's get going, then. I can't remember. Quite a few. We'd better check them all. We could halve the time by... We're not switching out. Oh, all I'm suggesting is that we do rooms on opposite sides of the corridor. With the doors open, we'll be able to see each other all the time. What if someone was hiding behind a door, Byron? They could trap us before the other one had time to do anything. Oh, look, then behind the door is where you look first, before you're even in the room. Right. Now, let's get started. Come on. Okay. I'll take this side. Okay. All right? Perhaps we should check the attic, too. Did Byron say he went up there? Well, not specifically, but he said he went all over. Oh. We may as well look while we're here. Oh, well, all right. Oh, but, but watch that ladder. It looks pretty old. It's solid enough. But just hold the bottom. All right. They built things to last in those days. Oh, oh careful. It's a bit dark up here. Uh, well, isn't there light? I've got some matches. Uh, hang on. Oh. Uh, yes. There's a switch on the far side. Oh. Looks like there's another entrance there. I'll work my way across. Oh, oh, oh I'll be careful. <laughs> Byron, Byron, I don't like this. I keep losing sight of you. You're doing fine. If only I hadn't been so stupid as to have lost the damn keys in the first place. I can't imagine how it happened. I've never lost anything like this before. I suppose it's difficult. These things only happen when it's really important. Or perhaps you just don't notice if you lose something that doesn't matter. Oh, now what's that? Well... Nothing in there. Just a pile of rather horrible old furniture. How are you doing in there, Lucy? Lucy? Oh! Uh, Arthur, are you all right? Yes, I just whacked my head on a beam, that's all. I need to light another. Oh, damn! What is it now? I've dropped the stupid matches. It's pitch black up here. Work your way back to the entrance. There should be plenty of light there. It's all right. I'm sure I can find the box. Well, I'm coming up. I don't like it down here on my own. Be careful. It's very dark. Don't worry. I I'll take it nice and slow and easy. Lucy, Lucy, are you all right? Yes, but I thought I found the keys. Something caught the light and I thought, curtain hooks are stupid oh. like a curtain. Oh. They're not going to unlock any doors, are they? When I saw them, I thought, I hope... Well, gently now, gently, it's all right. Oh, we've got to find them soon. And we will. I'm sorry. I'm... Oh, no. What is it? Arthur. I think he's in terrible danger. Why? I had to do Mary's hair because she couldn't see herself at all in the mirror. What? Vampires don't have a reflection, do they? Lucy! Oh my God, Arthur! I was right. She's got him. Arthur, Arthur, we're coming! Here, I'm over here. Arthur, are you all right? Yes, but thank God you got here so quickly. I've never been so frightened in all my life. You managed to fight her off then. Who? Mary. Mary? When she attacked. What are you talking about? Mary's dead. Oh. Look, with bite marks on her neck. That's why I called you. <laughs> Did you see anything? No, I was up in the attic. She said she was coming to join me, but when she didn't arrive, I went back to see what was going on, and here she was at the foot of the ladder. And I thought she... Oh, how awful of me. Look, that's not your fault, Lucy. You thought you had good reason to be suspicious. Let's get down to the kitchen. We can shut ourselves in and think this through. Right. Lucy... <laughs> Be careful with Arthur. What do you mean? Well, he was alone with Mary. Now she's dead. But he told us what happened. Yes, but can we trust him? Look, I know I said I didn't believe in vampires, but perhaps it's true that some people think they're vampires and, well, behave like them. You mean Arthur? Well, vampires are meant to hate garlic. Arthur was disgusted by the smell of that wild garlic outside when we arrived. Oh, yes, but he's so English, he won't even have French dressing on a salad. That doesn't mean a thing. You may be right, but keep an eye on him. 
Well, obviously there's someone in this place with us. And equally obviously, we've still got to get out. Perhaps there's a way through these windows somehow. Those bars are set right into the stone. Even with a masonry chisel, it would take ages to get them loose. I'm afraid Arthur's right. Close it up, Lucy. The fog's coming in. All right. But we've got to do something. We can't just sit here waiting to die. Look, we're safe here. For the moment, at least. Look, the door's secure. Now, why don't we have a drink to calm us down a bit? Good idea. I think Shelley put the provisions in the pantry. Well, let's see what we've got. It's going to be all right. Ah, uh, I promise. Mainly food. Ah, how about some brandy? Fine. Would that suit you, Lucy, or uh, whiskey? I don't really like spirits. You ought to have something. God, a lot of fog drifted in while that window was open. That stuff, too. Not like traditional country air at all. Well, I'd be happy to be out in it rather than trapped in here. Please, have a drink, Lucy. Perhaps a tiny whiskey. It's all right, I'll get it. Are you right about the fog getting in here? Oh, what is it? It's all right, it's just a mouse. It's gone. Oh, you're frightening the life out of me. Sorry, I'm a bit jumpy. There you are, Arthur. One large brandy. I can't understand why we haven't found those keys. We've been everywhere. I know, it's bizarre. Ah, we've forgotten the cellars. That's where they must be. Then let's get moving. Come on, Arthur. Arthur? No! Oh. 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 What the... Arthur? My God! How in heaven we, we, we've been with him all the time. Why didn't we see anything? I can't stand any more of this. What is this thing? It's like it comes out of thin air. That's it. Vampires can travel on mist and fog. Remember it coming through the window? That's not possible. It must be. It's the only way something could have got to Arthur. Oh, God, I'm frightened, Byron. I don't oh. want it to oh, We can still get out. The keys must be in the cellar. The faster we get down there, the faster we escape. Oh. Now, where did we go? Byron, I don't like it down here. This cellar frightens me. Don't worry. We'll soon be out. I still can't believe that something got into the kitchen and attacked Arthur without us realising. I mean, he hadn't even moved. It must have been incredibly quick to stop him crying out. You think it came on the fog? You know a lot about vampires, don't you? A little. Maybe over here. Have you always liked steak tartar? This is hardly the time to discuss my taste buds. Mm, all right. Now, let me see. What's this in the corner? There's something catching the light. Hang on. Uh, no, I, I can't see a thing. <laughs> what are you doing? Get this off me. Oh, no, Lucy, don't be silly. I'm no killer. Knowing about vampires eating raw steak, that's all innocent, I promise. Why should I believe you? I wouldn't hurt a flea, Lucy. Now get these chains off me. I think you've been lying all along. Are you really an actor? Let me go. Tell me the truth, Byron. I... I... No, I'm not an actor. No Royal Shakespeare Company. No, nor Hollywood. I made it up. I wanted to make it sound like I was... Important. Your wives, Byron? How did they really die? There weren't any wives. I just wanted some sympathy and affection. People have never paid much attention to me. But I swear to you, I'm no murderer. I believe you. Thank God. Now let me go. Look. The keys. Well done. Where did you find them? In my hand. Uh, before that, I mean. Oh, I see. In my pocket. What? That's where they've been since I took them from you. What on earth are you talking about? You could have died earlier. But I rather wanted to keep you till last. This is no time for jokes. I'm deadly serious. I was curious to find out about your lying. And as you're such a poor actor, I thought I'd help you with some motivation for your final scene. This isn't funny. It's not intended to be. You're not the killer. You never had a chance to get to the others. You were with me all the time. Here, pussy, pussy. Oh, my God. No. But yes, that is the whole point. I can change form. I needed mere seconds to tempt Shelley upstairs. And for the attack on her and Mary, the bat travels swift as wind, Byron. Think back. There were crucial moments when I was out of your sight. I didn't follow you up the stairs after Shelley immediately, did I? And just before Mary died, I pretended to be finding curtain hooks. Moments are all a back needs. Watch! Oh. Oh. No! No, get off me! Get off me! Mm. <sighs> Jonathan, 
It was the easiest. But Arthur was the most fun. When we were fixing a drink in the pantry, I only had time for a few sips of him. But he's very <laughs> palatable. His English diet does have its good points. But you... You cannot be Dracula. Dracula? Nothing but myth. Or rather, he did exist. A cruel but great warrior. And he did impale the invaders of his lands upon the stake. But he never drank blood. However, there was a woman who did partake of the life-giving blood of others. Who has travelled the long, chill years of immortality across the endless, arid plains of time, and who has journeyed on slivers of moonlight from the land beyond the forest to the dull, green, ordinary heart of England. This woman is immortal, and for the present she calls herself... Lucy. No! Oh, yes, Byron. And sweet little Lucy is feeling dreadfully thirsty. Get off me. Leave me alone. Just a little tiny taste. Oh. I fear my breath is not so sweet. But Nosferatu, the undead, breathe the air of the grave and the charnel house. Please, please let me go. Oh, don't distress yourself. I'm not going to kill you yet. I intend to feast upon you for some days, or if I am careful, weeks. Help me! Byron, I chose this spot well, long, long ago. Your efforts at voice protection will reach no one. But I'm afraid I must leave you. I have some corpses to attend to, a variety of blood to savour. Now, I think darkness might help motivate your terror. <laughs> Poor, loveless Byron. You grave affection. Well, when I return, I promise you a flood of tiny, tender love bites. I will see you in eternity. Those bitten in playing with Dracula were Nicholas Grace, who played Byron Redgrave, Maureen O'Brien, who played Shelley Homewood, Malcolm Ward and Tina Gray, who played Arthur Renfield and Mary Morris, and Nicholas Bolton, who played Jonathan Parker. Lucy Weston was Cyril Jenkins, and the estate agent who escaped her fangs, Paul Panting. Playing with Dracula was conceived by Nick Fisher and executed by Martin Jenkins. Well, they had fun making that, didn't they? <laughs> and next Saturday's drama is A Haunting, starring John Sessions, and an architect seems to be possessed by an unseen force. Oh, 